You're listening to the Extraordinary Everyday Podcast with Wendy Johnson, episode number 53. Welcome to the Extraordinary Everyday Podcast, where women come to be inspired and motivated to become the best version of themselves and elevate the quality of their everyday. Now, here's your host, Certified Life Coach, Wendy Johnson. Hello, beautiful friends. How are you doing today? I am doing excellent, and I'm excited to be with you today. We'll discuss how to overcome obstacles on the journey to building self-trust. This is a continuation of episode number 52. If you haven't listened to how to build self-trust, I recommend you go to that first and then follow up with this episode. Self-trust is the foundation of a fulfilling and empowered life, but it's not always easy to cultivate. Along the way, we encounter obstacles that can shake our confidence and derail our progress. So how do we overcome these obstacles and strengthen our trust in ourselves? Let's find out. I am going to present 10 obstacles to you. And I'll have several stories to go along with these obstacles. The first obstacle to building self-trust is perfectionism. The belief that we must be flawless in everything we do can create unrealistic expectations and a fear of failure. To overcome this obstacle, it's essential to embrace imperfection and recognize that making mistakes is a natural part of the learning process. By letting go of the need to be perfect, we can cultivate self-compassion and build trust in our ability to grow and learn from our experiences. I know this well. I'd like to call myself a recovering perfectionist. And when I notice the tendencies I'm showing some perfectionism, I immediately let it go. I'll put work out in the world that I don't feel is perfect, but I'm okay with that. Let me give you an example of a graphic designer. She was known for her attention to detail. However, despite her achievement, she struggled with perfectionism. She constantly second-guessed her work, fearing it wasn't good enough. This perfectionistic mindset became a barrier to building self-trust, as Emily couldn't accept her accomplishments without flaw. It wasn't until she learned to embrace imperfections and recognize her successes despite their imperfections that she began to trust herself more. Maybe you can relate to this, to Emily. Another obstacle is the fear of failure. The fear of falling short or not meeting our expectations can paralyze us and prevent us from taking risks. To overcome this obstacle, it's important to reframe our relationship with failure. Instead of seeing it as a reflection of our worth or competence, we can view it as an opportunity to grow and to self-discover. By embracing failure as a natural part of the journey towards success, we build resilience and trust in our ability to overcome setbacks. We're not avoiding failure. We're moving to it and through it and getting to the other side. Back when I first started teaching coaching, I was teaching males and females. And I had spoke with and worked with for a short time, a client named Jack. He had always dreamed of starting his own business, but the fear of failure held him back. He worried about what others would think if his venture didn't succeed and doubted his ability to handle setbacks. This fear paralyzed him, preventing him from taking the necessary steps to pursue his entrepreneurial dreams. It wasn't until 
Jake confronted his fear of failure head on. He hired me as a coach, acknowledging that setbacks were inevitable, but not indicative of his worth. Then he began to trust himself enough to launch his business. Eventually, he was able to leave his day job. Another obstacle is comparison. Comparison despair can undermine self-trust. When we constantly compare ourselves to others, we diminish our worth and accomplishment. To overcome this obstacle, it's important to shift our focus inward and celebrate our progress and achievement. We take note of the milestones on the way to our big goal, and we celebrate those. By cultivating self-awareness and self-compassion, we can break free from the cycle of comparison and trust in our own unique journey and abilities. We're all here for a reason, and we're all different. We are all unique, and we all have our own strengths. Related to comparison is negative self-talk, and this is our inner critic, and it can be one of the biggest barriers to self-trust. Constant self-doubt, self-criticism, and negative self-talk can erode confidence and undermine belief in one's ability. Another obstacle is past trauma. Past trauma can be a significant barrier to building self-trust. Experiences of abuse, neglect, or betrayal can leave deep scars that affect our self-esteem and confidence. To overcome this obstacle, it's important to seek support and healing, therapy, self-practices, and building supportive relationships can help us process our past trauma and rebuild our self-trust. I had a discovery call several years ago and a woman had told me that she had experienced significant trauma in her childhood. And she had these feelings of being unworthy and doubted herself. And despite what she's achieved, she struggled to trust herself and her abilities. She had scars of her past and it made it challenging to see her self-worth and potential. I recommended after our call that she seek out therapy before she started life coaching. She needed to confront her past trauma and begin to heal and rebuild her self-trust. She needed to know her worthiness was inherent. You're born with being worthy. And it wasn't defined by her past traumas. Another obstacle to self-trust is failing to set and enforce healthy boundaries. This is related to the way you're treated. Overcommitting, saying yes to everything. People-pleasing and allowing others to dictate one's choices can lead to feelings of powerlessness and a loss of confidence in one's ability to prioritize self-care and well-being. This is when you're putting others before yourself. You're neglecting your health and your mental well-being to support other people before yourself. Another obstacle is imposter syndrome. And this is characterized by the feelings of inadequacy and the fear of being exposed as a fraud, despite evidence of success. An individual affected by imposter syndrome may struggle to internalize their accomplishments and believe in their abilities. Maybe they are also comparing themselves to others. Other people are further ahead and you see yourself as a fraud and that you don't have the competence to do the same type of work. Another obstacle is to resist change. Fear of the unknown and resistance to change can impede self-trust. 
holding on to familiar patterns and avoiding new experiences out of fear of failure or discomfort can prevent people from trusting themselves to navigate unfamiliar territory. And this becomes more common the older we become. We become set in our ways. We don't want change. We want things to stay the same. So we're constantly fighting against what is. And the world is always evolving and we're evolving and we must change or we're going to have feelings of being stuck. A lack of self-compassion can hinder the development of self-trust. Being overly critical or judgmental towards oneself prevents people from nurturing a supportive inner dialogue and can lead to feelings of unworthiness. You want to have a nurturing, supportive inner dialogue so that you're not negatively affecting your self-worth. And the last obstacle is unhealthy relationships. Toxic or unsupportive relationships can undermine self-trust. Constant criticism and manipulation or betrayal from others can erode confidence and make it challenging to trust one's judgment and intuition. About seven years ago, I had a client in San Diego and she was in a toxic relationship. It was emotionally abusive. Her partner's constant criticism and belittling eroded her self-esteem and made it difficult for her to trust herself. She didn't believe that she could leave this toxic relationship. She wasn't strong enough. She doubted her decisions and second-guessed her intuition. She was afraid of what her partner might do to her. It wasn't until she found the courage to leave the toxic relationship and surrounded herself with her family and a supportive coach. She did a 12 week dream builder and began to dream and visualize her future and what that would look like for her. She reclaimed her autonomy and confidence in her judgment and she learned to trust herself. That's it, friends. Let's recap the 10 obstacles on your journey to self-trust. Number one, perfectionism. Number two, fear of failure. Number three, comparison. Number four, negative self-talk. Number five, past trauma. Number six, lack of boundaries. Number seven, imposter syndrome. Number eight, resistance to change. Number nine, lack of self-compassion. And number 10, unhealthy relationships. In conclusion, building self-trust is a journey filled with obstacles. But with courage, resilience, and self-compassion, we can overcome them. By embracing imperfection, reframing our relationship with failure, shifting our focus inward and healing from our past wounds, we can cultivate unshakable self-trust and live a life of empowerment and authenticity. Thank you for being here, friends. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, leave a review, and share it with others on their journey of self-discovery. Until next time, remember to trust yourself, embrace your journey, and keep growing. Take care, friends. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Hey, if you enjoy listening to this podcast, you have to come check out More You, my community of like-minded women. We show up to create the highest version of ourselves and elevate the quality of our everyday along the way. Head over to ontracklifecoaching.com forward slash join. That's O-N-T-R-A-C lifecoaching.com forward slash join. I'd love to see you in there. And if you haven't grabbed your copy of the Mindset Makeover, 
head over to ontracklifecoaching.com forward slash makeover and get a copy that teaches and inspires you to show up as your most extraordinary self.